Good afternoon. My name's Malcolm Taylor, and it's a real privilege to be here with you and the Construction Industry Council to be able to talk and present about the common data environment in practice. Um, my background is as a uh, professional engineer. I've been involved in design and building railway projects for, for many, many years. Um, and I had the privilege of working in Hong Kong. My children were born in Hong Kong. And uh, I was, wish I was with you uh, a lot more. But today, um, I am now work for Crossrail International, having spent some 10, 12 years on the Crossrail project. Crossrail International's uh, an advisory practice that's wholly owned by the UK government, uh, providing advice to global clients that's of a strategic nature in terms of uh, operating, designing, uh, bringing into use and um, delivering major railway projects. And my specialism is in uh, digital strategy and design based on my 10 years of uh, working on Crossrail and the development of that common data environment and uh, the use of digital practices. And we're now working on digital uh, environments in places like Vietnam, Middle East, South America. Um, so we have quite a good spread of experience and understanding of some of the issues. And today, really, what I'd like to do is share some of that experience with you about the common data environment in practice. Um, just set the scene a little bit to give you a feel for where I come from it. Talk a little bit about the origins of the CDE, because it is quite important, I think, to understand that in perspective and share the lessons learned with you based on uh, some uh, real sort of down to earth experience. Um, just wanted to set the scene, uh, really, to get people to appreciate that, you know, when we're delivering these major projects, they comprise of many stages and we have many teams within those stages creating all sorts of information and it's typically in really quite a fragmented way. A lot of suppliers, designers, contractors producing information and data in their own particular way, often very well, but the building blocks are usually uh, uh, really very much the way they do it and it can be very, very hard to fit these building blocks of information together from different organisations. The common data environment, really, it's a combination of processes and technologies which combine together across the various stages of the life cycle, uh, are used for exchanging and managing data. And it's uh, creating an environment where everybody can uh, access and create this collaborative environment um, for, for, for our projects. CDE provides that means for exchanging and uh, coordinating information with everybody. So, really, CD is just one part of this digital environment. There are a number of components that go into creating a, a, a digital environment. The CDE is, to me, just about the most important thing. It's the core of the digital environment. But there's also a lot of other things that one needs to do to be able to properly deliver the, the, the outcomes that are really quite significant. And uh, the CDE is just part of, that, uh, part of that process. Its importance really is that when we think about the way in which we create information, when we think about the project goals and how we create the functional requirements, we then create, un undertake our engineering design, our social design with environmental and uh, sustainability, we construct and operate. That digital environment contains all the information and the processes and the ways in which information flows through creating data across these various stages. Um, as we then see into operation and maintenance, from operation and maintenance, then the outcomes can be seen. Common data environment allows us to manage and store our information in a way that we can actually get that traceability from our goals through to our outcomes. So not just thinking about it from an engineering uh, perspective and delivering the engineering, but also the other aspects and things like sustainability, smart cities, being able to measure and be account and show how our projects can be accountable for those significant changes the infrastructure can bring. 
the data inside a CDE is very much uh, uh, centralized and data centric. We have to remember that applications come and go and the importance of being data centric is it allows information to be accessed by many different parties and the data is always at that single source of truth. People come and go, applications change over time, but data is at the heart of our projects and it needs to be managed as a very valuable resource. Now, the concept of a CDA certainly started a long time ago. And I remember using the BS1192 um, uh, part one 2007 version where it first talked and mentioned about a CDA, about how it, to collaborate and share data. And it was a good, uh, very simple document, which actually the Crossrail CDA is based entirely on. Um, it has been superseded by ISO 19650, um, but that too sets out a lot more detail. CDEs are uh, often thought of just single pieces of software, which is absolutely not a good way of thinking. It can be very, um, uh, very, very much needed to be thought about uh, as something suitable for dealing with the complexity and scale of projects from something very simple like uh, folders on a single server or through up to multiple um, re relational databases that you can uh, uh, use from the cloud. Depending on many, many things uh, depends on the shape of that uh, CDE. So as I say, simple folder structures that we're quite used to, or if you go into relational databases where a lot of information is tabulated and related, and that's one of the really powerful things about using data within a relational database, um, that you uh, create a great way for managing and sifting your data. So you uh, also CDEs on projects can start small and can start in simple folders uh, and then move into relational databases. There's another aspect we need to think about. And again, that's about how clients actually want to tackle their information, how whether they want to work as a thin client doing little work and leaving it all to the supply chain or going into great detail in delivery and uh, being heavily involved, creating lots of workflows, managing much of the detail. Again, so depending on how accountable uh, and how much involved the client wants to be depends on the shape and the nature of that CDA. ISO 19650 is very clear about the importance of the client understanding its role in creating a CDA for design projects in construction, even in uh, uh, the asset information models that uh, are, are used for operation. Client needs to be defining and establishing their data needs, the data DNA, so it can be consistent across all of its uh, activities, not just the asset management, but design and construction. And so it, the client organizations really need to think about the basic um, data that they need in their projects, where this data comes from, because this is what the common data environment's going to hold. And this is the trick about getting the uh, CDEs to be very effective, understanding what, in, what your information needs are, simple characteristics across all of the CDEs, defining what data you need at the end and what data you need during design and construction, the shape and the form of that, uh, the, store, the way you're going to store and manage your data, the amount of workflows you may want, uh, and uh, how you're going to then leverage the technology to make this work, to share and to collaborate. So, a little bit of an example just to illustrate some of those points from Crossrail project. Um, Crossrail has now moved into the Elizabeth line, but it took over 120 different contracts of one form or another to come together. And data, very much the, and information, very much the key, the glue holding this all together because everybody needed to collaborate. Everybody needed to work in that single source of truth. And Contractually, we required people to, to do that. We had to work within our client systems from which we paid for the software. And so there was no excuse for people not working within our, within our systems. Our main CDE comprised actually of three relational databases um, that were linked together. 
But the power of that really was demonstrated by creating workflows that got rid of very large amounts of software. Workflows within these databases, so not just using our a CAD 3D, 4D model design, but all our contract management, all our document control, all done within our uh, CDA. So all our information was joined up and uh, fitted perfectly. And all the supply chain understood exactly what was needed. A key thing, we started small in the design stage with just a few workflows as we needed in the design. And then as we moved into construction, we built up all of the additional workflows within that CDE as people needed them, eventually through into handover and snagging and the like. So the importance there is the CDE grows with your project, changes with your project, just like an organizational structure. And here, uh, looking at uh, some of the a snapshot of some of the data, uh, a few years ago when we had some three and a half million documents in the uh, uh, in, in our CDE, we had nearly 10 million uh, relationships formed between various uh, pieces of uh, data and information. And that was the key. The, and this actually grew, has grown very significantly as we moved into handover. The relationships that it enabled you to move swiftly from finding uh, uh, linked data that uh, made it using relational databases so powerful. Most people are very aware of the uh, benefits of not losing uh, information between various stages, but we very much demonstrated that the commercial incentive uh, uh, return on investment was very, very significant. It, it, but it wasn't just doing it because it were made a lot of commercial sense. The decision making was so much better. The control, the control of assurance, particularly on these complex types of projects. So really, um, standing back and thinking about some of the lessons learned on not just from the Crossrail project, but from these other projects I've, I've worked on uh, over the last few years. The CDE is very fundamental part to creating a digital environment. It needs to be thought of alongside all of these other parts, thinking about what information is needed, thinking about the scale of projects and the type of client accountability uh, that is wanted in terms of uh, 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 creating, um, creating information. It's about thinking about the way in which information is going to be managed. What workflows do you need? What processes do you need? Fundamental things like getting the um, uh, work breakdown structures, getting the asset classification structures, in place. All of these things, very, very important. Software, and I would always recommend not trying to build your own CDE, uh, but software is important and choosing off-the-shelf software that is already, uh, most of these types of uh, BIM and CDE softwares are relational databases with wrappers around of particular workflows. But that's really only a small part of it. You have to think about your classification systems, your breakdown structures, your data DNA, because those are the really important things. And those are the things that make the CDE work. They take time. These things don't happen uh, uh, just by, this, by thinking you buy a piece of software. Preparing the user requirements, getting your functional specifications for your CDEs to suit the projects that you're after, or suit the asset management framework of your that you wish to use and then extend into your projects. It takes time to prepare them. And that preparation is absolutely vital so that you get exactly what you want. The procurement can also take, uh, take months to make sure you get what you want and then configuring it and bringing it into use. So don't, whatever you do, think that these things happen overnight. They don't. They can develop in line with your project as your project grows and changes. Your CDE should be changing and uh, 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 repre representing that. And you can also think about the security very carefully because that's pretty care pretty important too. And again, there's lots of guidance to uh, help you do that uh, online nowadays. So really, in summary, the success, and I think you'll see in the 
uh, submissions that are going to be assessed here. You can look and see how well the CD is used through life cycles, how, see how well it is used for managing data and uh, workflows. CDE and going digital bring such significant efficiencies and better decision making. And that's how another way how we can measure success and how we would look to see uh, uh, the outcomes that are created in terms of benefits of efficiencies and effectiveness. But clients, particularly users, do need to plan for a CDE within a digital strategy to make things happen because the CDE is only part of that overall digital strategy which needs to be linked to other strategies such as procurement. Um, I hope some of this has been of interest to you uh, but as I say it has certainly been a real privilege to be with you today and uh, the, the, the CIC to be able to talk about such an interesting subject. Thank you.